All right. Um, right, folks. So um, we kind of just ran out in the timer there for part one. Um, kind of rushed back at the end before. there. No, no, don't chat. worry about that. More chat, the better. But you kind of opened up a can of worms. So I think it's a good, um, good idea maybe to do a wee part two here. So you said you're on trial with Derby and that Shea Given, um, icon of Donegal goalkeeping, icon of Premier League goalkeeping, was instrumental um, in bringing that about. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, and also I was lucky enough. I've had a, I've had a few experiences in England. Like, um, okay. So the first one I had was, I suppose out of all the places you would have thought you would have got picked up, you thought it would be like maybe up in the Irish setup or maybe playing somewhere in Dublin, like, but. I was actually playing in the Foyle Cup um, right. against Derry. It's a strange one. I, 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 when you think back on it now, it's mad. Like, so for, I suppose for any younger lads out there, it doesn't really matter where you're playing. Like, there's always mm. going to be someone watching. Like, so I suppose don't take any, any matches for granted. Now, I can say that definitely now. I suppose when you're sitting sitting at home, maybe on Saturday at 3 o'clock and Derry who's playing or on a Friday when Hanks yeah. are playing and you're playing the scores and stuff, you love to be playing. Um, But it was picked up in the Foyle Cup. So I didn't go to the Kennedy Cup, was with Harps, and we had played in the Foyle Cup with the 15, so I was playing a year young. And we played Norwich in the first game, and there was a scout from Watford there at the game, and it was done quite well in the game. Um, And we played the rest of the groups. So we played Crusaders, and then we played, I think it was Donegal Schoolboys 2002 team. And then we in the semi-final, then we played Derry. And I suppose at the time, it was Harps, Derry, Sligo, 15s League of Ireland, like, so for us to actually play them before the season starts, like it was, it was class. Spec, like we yeah. were, we were buzzing for it. Like we played them up in Torn Hill College in the semi final. Uh, it ended up being probably, probably not a great game. I think everyone was probably too, too high, too hyped up for it. Like ended up being null nil. But just done whatever I had to do in the game. Came and took a few crosses. Maybe made one or two saves. Now we ended up getting beaten penalties. Like, um. And might have saved one penalty, maybe max in a shootout. Yeah. But we got beaten penalties, like so it was kind of coming home and was pretty, pretty, pretty dejected, like just sitting about home then that night. And we had a third place playoff to play the next day. Um, but I remember sitting about home like and I just remember dad getting a phone call and he went way out way outside for it. Like, didn't really think too much of it. It was on probably watching TV or something. And he came back in and he says to me, he says, uh, how'd you play today? And this is she's a totally done, totally done okay. Like apart from yeah. the penalties, obviously. Like, well, he says, uh, he says there's a man on the phone to me there. He says that Watford want to take you over for a trial, and I was like, kind of like, are you taking, are you taking the muck out? Are you taking, taking, yeah. take, taking the, the pee out of me? Like, and he says, no, nah, no. Nah. Um, he says Kevin was on the phone to me there, so it was a scout called Peter Allen, who I suppose I know quite well now. Um, he wanted to take me over, so he's seen something on me in the Norwich and the in the dairy and the dairy game, take me over, um. And went over then in the summertime. Remember we we played a trial game with Ireland on the Monday, and I went over for the week, and ended up probably doing very well, very well. Like I was thirteen, so I was a few years off that age of getting signed at sixteen. Um, so went over for the week. Nathan Nathan Gardside was actually there. He was the Watford right, twenty three yeah. at the time. Yeah, so he was great with me. He kind of took me under his wing whenever I was training with them. Like, so I was in with Watford and Alex Chamberlain, who used to play for Watford. He was the goalkeeping coach. Um, and he took he took a real shine into me, like, and tried went really really well. Um, you just know yourself as a footballer when things are gonna go well or things yeah, are going yeah. maybe, maybe <clears throat> south. Like, and I remember we played Derby. Funny we played Derby and Upswich and ended up going over them two teams afterwards. Uh, we played Derby and on the way back from Derby, um, I remember Dad getting a phone call from the head of the academy saying. Listen, we were really interested in him. Like, if he was sixteen now, we'd want to sign him. Like, um, so that was that was grand. Everything seemed to be nailed on at them. Coming the Christmas time, was meant to go back over at Easter for another two weeks. Um, and then Christmas time, then Watford went through a wild period of having first team managers. They could have them for six weeks. Um, and there was a, I think maybe an English manager came in, and he. Completely changed the academy setup. Alex Chamberlain got sacked. The head of the academy got sacked. Um, and a lot of the lads, I suppose, they were earmarked to sign when they were sixteen. 
was basically told, no, nah, listen, it's not happening. And they went with a more local based approach with signing lads from London and stuff. Yeah. So like that, that was a bit of a kick in the kick in the teeth too, like that you kinda thought you were nailed on at Watford, you know, that's every lad's dream they get over when you're sixteen. Um and then that happens. But then went over to Derby then. Um it's just I don't I'm I i know my dad was chatting to Shay and stuff. Um and Shay took me over. Uh so trained for the week over there, like and the facilities over there and everything. You're second to like yeah. that. Derby was Derby was definitely the best. It was unbelievable. They had about thirteen pitches and all of them were were like literally like Crow Park Herpets, like yeah. or, oh, they were class. Like I remember I was training two or three times a day over there, like and probably done quite well. We we trained, trained with the eighteens, trained with the twenty threes. Twenty threes were a serious level and that eighteens team actually we ended up winning the the Premier League at under eighteen level, so they had the likes of Jason Knight was playing with Phil right, for them. Okay, yeah. right now. Festi Obuselli, I stayed in the same house as him. He was he was a, he was an animal back then too. Like is he at Udinese now? Is it Udinese? Yeah, yeah. Udinese, he made yeah. he was on the Irish senior team there last week, or I think it was last week they went to play Belgium and that. Um, and there was lads like Louis Louis Subley. There was lads of Morgan Whitaker who's playing with Plumhouse. Like you kind of try and keep tabs on some of them. Yeah, lads, yeah. Like, I played with Liam Delap was in that team as well. The okay, lad was playing yeah. with, with Stokes. Yeah, he it was he he was geez, he was sound too. He was a nice fella. Like did um, he? he um, from, I know he has some family from Donegal as well. Did I you think he's the first? He's a first that, or second yeah. cousin. Ad AD Delaps, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was because I would have been chatting AD then in the twenty twenty season at Harps. Like just obviously when you're spending that much time with people, you chat to some people about things like and. John Lady, he was over in trial himself. Like, I think That's Rory right, did yeah. the first or second cousin of okay, Lady, yeah. Lady's dad, or I'm, I'm not too sure what the connection is, but I know they're related anyway. Um, so it was over there. Thought it done quite well. We played like kind of like a friendly tournament then at the end of the week, like, and met with the head of the academy. Um and he just said, Listen, you've done you've done well, you've acquitted yourself well all week. Um, but at that at that time there was a goalkeeper who was England number one at the, at the year below. So instead of taking me or instead of taking any other goalkeeper, they took him a year young and trained okay. him up. So he got he got a scholarship a year young. So you kind of thinking to yourself, you know what, fair enough. Like that's it's not a wild pie you can do there. You're still lucky. Yeah. Like. And then was over at Upswitch then. I'd say probably maybe about two or three months later. um, And that one came about through, I think it was... Just people chatting at the foil super cup or something. Remember okay. dad getting yeah, dad getting a phone call as well. Um uh just to say that listen, they were interested and that they would speak to Harps and everything. And I went over, went over on the the Monday, came back on the Saturday. Uh stayed in the same house. There's a fellow called Connor McKendry, he's playing with Corey in now. He was playing with the twenty threes at the time. Um and Shane McLaughlin, I think he's playing in League Two. He was from Kerry. Uh, so like there was Irish lads about, and yeah. there was a few, there were a few good players in that Upswitch team. I, I was lucky enough to train with the first team, the goalkeepers for half an hour, forty minutes. There's more serving to them and stuff, but that was mm. my first day. So I was like, Jesus, is class. Like like there was a fella called Bart. I'm not gonna get the surname right. Maybe Bartoski or something. And at the time, those twenty eight. Yeah. I think he had just came back from the World Cup or something, which was I was like, Jesus, this is, this is class. Like, um, I trained with the eighteens most of the week and probably done quite well. But there's a fella from Donegal, he's out in the states now, Connor O'Reilly. He was over at Upswich. That's that right. Time. Yeah, he was signing with them, so he was great with me that week too. Like, he kind of took me under his wing, like, and you'd uh, go and eat together and chat together and change room and everything, like, and played a friendly against um. So over in England, like players that aren't in academies they they play in like it's like non-league academy so they go about playing friendlies against said academy teams then on a tuesday mm -hmm. um i suppose maybe it's for lads who don't play on a saturday in the 18s league and the team that we played weren't great we ended up one and four and all done decent enough in the game hadn't really a wild pile to do train then wednesday thursday friday came home totally done decent enough totally done okay because uh, the 23's manager, I remember at the time, he's called Jared Nash, he was an Irish fella and he would have been friendly with Paulo Sam. Like, and I remember him saying to me one day in training, he said, uh, he says, uh, you're, you're kind of there, thereabouts, they're 16s. And I was like, yeah. And I was around the time of the victory shield. Like, um, 
and he says, yeah, I must get on to Paul. He says, I thought you'd done quite well all week. Like, so I was like, happy days. This, this, this could work out for me here. Like, but I think they ended up taking a keeper from Poland or something. Okay, um, yeah. So you, you really are up against the whole of Europe. And yeah. probably now it's, it's, it's even further afield. Like, um, because there was a goalkeeper from Greece, I think, at Upswich as well at the time. Um, so like yeah, you really are up against the whole of Europe, like, and it does open your eyes to the catchment area that they have, like, like they can sign oh, yeah. boys from anywhere at all. Yeah. Um, and was over at Bournemouth then for a week, uh, and they done the, the the goalkeeping over there is class. They have they have a really good goalkeeping unit there. Like they, it's really it's the training's really different, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. The, the normal stuff of ladders and cones and everything. Mm -hmm. And they actually were they were these GPS vests that can tell like how many times you dive in a training session, how many jumps you have, how many sprints you take. So all their training is calculated like. So yeah. like I remember on the Monday I went over and trained with the eighteens keepers and they were only allowed to do a certain amount of dives or it was something something mental like that. They were all okay. wearing GPS and stuff. Um I think it's called Catapult is the the software company. Um and was lucky enough to have seen seen the first team keepers training, like seeing Arthur Boric, like and a Celtic fan, like I thought that's, Yeah, that's that class, would have been like, vital. Like, the, the, the holy the goalie. Man, man, the holy goalie is right there. So um but done 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 all right over there, but just didn't 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 get signed. There was a keeper over there from Iceland at the same time as me. Um and he I think he might have been a year older than me, but his birthday was between September and December. So he mm -hmm. was playing and he was able to be in the same age group as I was. So he was two thousand two, but he was the same age as me over in England. So I probably have the worst birthday for if I wanted to sign for a team in England, because it goes from September, September, my birthday's right, yeah. August. So my birthday's in August. So maybe if I was a month later, obviously like maybe another year of development physically and everything might have might have helped. Like, but yeah, I think they ended up they ended up taking the keeper from from Iceland instead. So it's just it opened your eyes completely. It's madness. Like they yeah. might they, they might they might the places they looked like. Um because there was a scout there or a, a goalkeeping scout there that week. And he was what the fellow from Iceland, like, and he was obviously pushing him on big time, like, um, yeah. But no, like, had a few really good experiences, like, and like when you suppose though, when you're not getting signed, you no, know, it definitely does knock your confidence up. But like at, at Watford, like I remember after that, I say probably for the next two or three months, like I was on cloud nine, like me training was class, you were going yeah. really well, the matches and everything, like, and then I suppose you have Derby, Upswich, Bournemouth, and you're not getting signed with any of them. Although there's probably valid reasons. Like I remember my confidence did take a knock big time. Like mm -hmm. um it was around the time of the Harp seventeen season. So I was playing the year young. Um and it was kinda we, we kinda shared it week about like me and a keeper called Adrian McLaughlin. Um he's from Killy Garden. Uh we shared a week about and I suppose it, it probably took a game against Shelburne where we won three 0 where it played really well to kind of just get that confidence back and to kind of get back to what you were doing beforehand. Like yeah. Um but I ended up going back uh do, doing quite well again and then was in training with the seniors. Not all the time would have been in more so when they didn't need a keeper. Yeah. But the year before at the under fifteens I was in I was in with the seniors on a Monday and a Wednesday. So it'd have been in with Gal, Peter Burke and Jamie Bells, three keepers there at the time like and mm -hmm. when you're training you're training four days a week. So it would have been in Monday, Wednesday with the seniors, Tuesday, Thursday with the fifteens like and even with the fifteens and that there's a keeper coach there, Andrew Wilson, like and he was he was quite good at the time, so he was like yeah, like we were there Tuesday, Thursday. So you're getting quality quality keeper stuff like... for four days a week, like so it obviously that improved you. Yeah. Um and then twenty nineteen and then it was back was was in kind of and then out seniors then that year. Um and then towards the end of the season then Gal got injured, so I was on the bench against Derry then the league. And done quite well in training for the last few weeks, and then might made, made the was in the preseason then the year after. But the experiences in England were class. Like like the, yeah, the, the the learnings you take from keepers over there is is unreal. Like when you take them back home, like it obviously does help you help you a lot. Like yeah, and that's interesting. I wasn't aware that you were over that many times and with quite high pro yeah. profile clubs. You yeah, know, decent teams, right? yeah, and you're talking about there. Um, you know, your confidence taking a hit from not maybe getting signed or not having that bit of luck. To me, what would be interesting is 
Did you feel then, let's say, you know, you've went over to Derby, to Watford, did you feel actually a bit more pressure then? You're obviously, you were saying you're competing basically for number one spot with um, Adrian. Did you feel pressure then coming back that you had to be maybe, you know, there was an image you had to uphold or there's a standard you needed to uphold? Um, Did you feel that a little bit that... You know, I, I, if you, yeah, if no, you I, did I, make a mistake or whatever, that was, you know, because um, that's how, from the outside looking in, that's how maybe I would feel coming back from one of those experiences. I suppose, though, I got if you get a good bit of advice from Dad and got a bit of advice from Kevin McHugh. Whenever I went over mm-hmm. to England, no one, no one knew about it. Like, like yeah, unless, okay. I, unless I clashed with training, I kept it to myself. Like, even friends at home and stuff, like, no one, no one really knew I was over. Yeah. Like. Um, but I do know what you mean. Like definitely, like the I definitely felt as if, listen, I have to be on it here every night. Like yeah, especially, yeah. yeah no, the, yeah, I do, I do, hundred percent know what you mean. It's a good point. Like, um, and definitely you would have felt that when you're with the Irish team and come back to training. Like, like if you, you could be doing a shooting drill. Like you could save or make a shot, but if you let one through your legs, like mm. that's going to be the one. It was going to be like, geez, how is he up at international setup? You know that kind of way. No, hundred percent is a good point. Like, definitely, like there is a bit of pressure to, to, to keep up them performances. Like, um, and it's it's hard to keep up your levels all the time. Yeah. Like you are going to make mistakes at times. Like, um, I suppose just about how you deal with them and stuff. But um, definitely not. It's, it's a good point. Like, like that was probably a good bit of advice. Like, not to put anything up on social media that kind of way. Yeah. Um, just to keep it to yourself. So there's no pressure that much pressure that everyone knows that you were you were let you were over here and you were over there like so um I suppose that was that was a good bit of advice I got there to be fair yeah that's no, interesting like because I think um obviously there's a you know a million ways to skin a cat but it's interesting your approach there that you've actually stayed you're you you come across anyways as being very humble um but you know there's a lot of young lads that you might see in social media that are on trial and they're getting all the photos and it's yeah, yeah. it's almost like this I, I don't know um paid experience they're going for like and it def- you know, definitely is nice now when you when you have the photo at home or yeah. you have a photo in your camera you and the you and the upswitch gear the derby gear or whatever no it's definitely it's a nice one like like I suppose the only way people might have found out I might have had it as my lock screen for a while or something yeah, or something yeah. like that like you know that kind of way um, yeah but yeah that's interesting. And, you know, I, I was making some notes before um, I, I got you on. Um, now, this is something I was wondering too, and it sort of, I've wondered a little bit more as you sort of spoke on. And um, we spoke a little bit too. You're doing a bit of coaching with Gaelic and um, being from West Donegal, and you've had a couple of setbacks there with the soccer. Has has the Gaelic ever turned your head? Have you had anyone whispering down round down low? You know, maybe you could be involved in a county setup, or um, you know, I suppose coming out of Harps is is that something that's ever turned your head? Uh, and in fairness, <laughs> I was up at the county minors for a while, so I was okay. at uh, it would have been the twenty twenty year, uh, but kind of soccer was always my number one. Like like I always yeah. have played like the whole way up. But it would always have been to suit when soccer when when football was on. Like like if it clashed, yeah, yeah. I, I always went to football. But um, the manager of that team was Luke, was Luke Barrett. Like and in, in fairness, he's a class coach. Like he he definitely he definitely had me thinking about playing Gaelic. Like because like, remember the sessions that he used to put on. Like you'd you'd come home and you'd be ready to run through brick walls. Like honestly, God, like he was he was class. So he was. Um, and even la- last year when I was playing in the senior team with Dunlow, like it's like. You're, you're kind of you might meet someone before a game on a Sunday like and they're saying oh best luck today and that like and you, you kind of the, the Gaelic in the community down here means a lot to people like and it's, yeah. it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big deal like but those football would probably be would, would be me number one like um, but definitely the Gaelic is uh, it's the dynamic part of the world anyway it's a it's a big it's a it's a big part of the community like I've seen lads like the two lads that I used to care share with like Daniel and Fanan like they both Went the Gaelic route. They were with the mm-hmm. county minors, county under twenties, um, and they're happy. They're happy out now. Like they're playing, both yeah. playing with Kido, with Kido and Neve Connell. Like so, they're they're happy out that way. But 
Um, I suppose around the time I was involved with the seniors at Harps too, when I was with the county minors, like, and I suppose you're when you're with the seniors there, you're gonna be pretty happy to stay to stay with them, like, and you were training nearly every day with them. So, um, no, nah, I was with football was always my number one, like. Yeah, yeah, no, because I always wonder that experience. Um, you know, being from Rafo, very much, uh, I would say a soccer town. Um, I've I've obviously played with lads like Darrow Boyle and. Jason McGee, yeah. you've played Irish underage football and probably, you know, um, ha- had a really good chance of having um, a career in senior football, certainly within yeah. the League of Ireland, if not a further afield. So I always like to hear that other perspective and and, and see, you know, um, how, how that impacts people, probably more so in West Donegal, I think, can be um, is where there maybe is a lot more pressure there. You're talking about how important it is um, to people within within the community. So I know, as you said there, you are working sort of closely with, um, is it Dunlow Miners you're coaching at the Miners, minute? Miners, I'm coaching them at the minute. they taking yeah. the strength and conditioning sessions and that. And okay, yeah. They, they take the seniors and that for strength and conditioning sessions too. If, if, Ronan, if Ronan can't make it or whatever, and something that was set up this year, there's three or four of us like that, that do the sports course now at IT like, and, it's a great experience for us, like so it is being able yeah. to work with teams and like you, you can you can have all the knowledge you want, like, but getting that experience on a on a gym floor or whatever, like is, is class, like and have a job in the gym at home as well and the in the hotel and the low, like so you're getting loads of experience that way, like you're kinda of killing two birds with one stone, especially with the job up in the gym, you're getting paid for it as well, like so it's it's great, like. So is that is that kinda of... You, I know you're studying LYT or ATU, as it's known yeah. now. Uh, is it a strength and conditioning where you want to sort of pursue? Uh, either, so at the end of this year now, I have to say you either do performance, which is a strength and conditioning, or you can go down the road to like PE teaching. So yeah. I, to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, There's times where you're thinking definitely you want to be a PE teacher and then you're doing some of the sessions with the lads and you're loving it and you're like, geez, you know, the SNC would be, would be good to go down as well. But whatever route you do pick, like there's there's loads of routes to get to get around it. Like, um, like you know, like there's there's some courses in DCU that do PE teaching on its own, mm-hmm. and then you can do performance or sports performance degrees nearly in most colleges now. So yeah, like there's loads there's loads of loads of options there. So there is, but learning all that stuff as well at the minute with the ACL rehab, like some of the modules we've done, like biomechanics and movement and stuff, like when you're basically in your rehab you learn how to run properly like and mm-hmm. then having having all them classes was with anton mcfadden and neil barrett and them um and actually like learning how to run properly and then you're kind of watching how they coach it and you take it home and then you do it yourself like it's it's, it's priceless information so it is like it's, it's oh, yeah. brilliant like yeah that's like, that's yeah. one that's one of the things i suppose for myself um doing my acl um, I know I spoke about my experience and my sort of rehab process, but you kind of immerse yourself into the literature and you the biomechanics oh, of the body, and you do come away with a wealth of knowledge, which, you know, um, if you can use for further injuries or future injuries, um, or even um, pass that on to someone, it's going to be useful as well. Um Definitely. And then another thing I just want to touch upon. So um, you, you spoke there, Tommy Cannon. Um, he took you on loan to Derek yeah. View. Um, maybe, do you want to just talk about, um, I'm going to just push you and dig a little bit deeper on your sort of experiences with Harps. I think you sort of, had you finished up the 19 stuff and then um, what sort of maybe happened in regards then to your experience then with the seniors? Yeah, so I went in. Kevin pushed me forward when I was under 15 to so train with them. So I was 14, and you were in training with the seniors twice a week, mm-hmm. like, and that was that was class, like. Um, and then the year after is more so, but the 17s and the 19s training. Um, and then towards the end of the season when Gal got injured, or if there were shorter keepers, I would go up for training, like, um, and they got on the bench for the Derry game. Um, did the warm up and the draw had a game before the playoff and everything, like packed out stadiums like it was class like um and then that that christmas or that january was in full time with the seniors then for the pre-season the 2020 season um so 
tell you were literally a full time footballer at this time, yeah. whatever about it, what it was at fourteen, like like that 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 pre season in particular, we were on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you were off on a Tuesday, you were on Wednesday, Thursday, you were off on a Friday, um, and like traveling from Dunlow and all that, like go back again, you 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 wouldn't have done it without your mum or your dad driving you, yeah, like, like it was class, like. Um and at that time as well it was before the COVID, so you would have been up with the Irish schools team, and then you would have been playing friendlies with Harps reserves and Tommy was the manager at the time, like so you were getting all your training, you were getting all your matches, like like t- it was class, like and I was only it was in TY in school, so I don't know if I was in school too often that that them yeah, few yeah. months, like but it was it was class now, so it was um and Tom McDermott and Mark Anthony was the two keepers, but Tom had. I suppose he had a fair few knee injuries in his time. Yeah. He was over a spurs, so he was. That's like, right. Um, and I, I was most of the preseason. I was in training with Mark. How did you time, find like, that? Oh, it was class. Jesus, yeah. was, I was on like like Mark's Mark's class. So he was like, he's a good, he's lad, a good like, character too. Oh, he's a like, funny man. Like, so yeah, he was, yeah. like he's, he's, he's he's mental. Like, but good goalkeeper too. Like, and very good. With, with all the keepers, I was there. Like, like watching Kieran Gallagher. Like. He took training so seriously. Like, he was he was class. Like every yeah, training session, he had, he had to be on it. Like and with Peter and Jimmy, the same as well. Um, but that was a great thing for me as well when I was younger. That the lads you would you would meet in the changing room, like like that twenty twenty season, the Harps in particular. Like you had the likes of Raf Guitaro there, like seeing them boys and how they went about their business on a day to day. And the change room before matches and the change room training after training, how they looked after themselves. Like that that season in particular, like you had Rui Harkin, you'd Shane McElhaney. I don't want to name too many because you could name the whole team like, like yeah, that's such yeah. like um and then the COVID hit and then we had another preseason and I remember Tom got injured as well. He was injured for quite a long time that time. So I went in and I could honestly say it was the best I've ever trained in my life. Like yeah. I, it was a trend like mad in the lockdown, the pitches at home and stuff with the lads and that. And then was training like unbelievable. Like that's definitely how I got my contract. So I was lucky that Tom got injured because I wouldn't have been able to be in all the small city games. I wouldn't have been able to be in all the matches. Was on the bench quite a bit. Um, that's probably definitely how I got my pro contract. Like just from I suppose doing that well and training and stuff. And at the time you would have been, I suppose I would have been a wee bit oblivious to how well I was doing. Like, but. I remember Raf did an interview on Sound uh, when well, I was on SoundCloud, there was Donegal Sports Hub or Donegal Live Sport or whatever it was. Um, and he was just chatting about the changing room and stuff, and he had said, like, young Paddy McGarvey had come in and he was unbelievable in training. Like, and that yeah. was the first time that I actually thought they thought I was good. I yeah, was, like, was just, was, you're, you're just going in training, like, and when you get that wee boost, I remember uh we did a few weeks training then afterwards and I remember being on cloud nine for another few weeks like and confidence was 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 way up like it was back to what I was at before after the Watford thing. Um and that was grand and met Ollie and he wanted to give me a two year contract so jumped at it and took it. Um but it was a great goalkeeper coach there too, David Crawford. Hey he was That's right. He was he yeah, was, he was super, super with me. I was. I've been lucky like I've had some great goalkeeping coaches like they're when I was in trial in Derry in particular, there was, a, there was a keeper coach there called Rodney Dazell. Um, he used to take me then for private coaching and one to one, and he he brought me on to no end as well. He was class so he was. Um, and then the twenty twenty, so we're going into the twenty twenty one season. Then chatting a bit earlier about breaking my hand, so I done the first pre season training, second night in Fun Valley, done a shooting drill and broke my hand, so I was out for ten weeks. Um, but Luke McNicholas was the second choice keeper at the time at Hearts. Right, yeah. I think he's a Wrexham now or someone. Wrexham, he's a yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like there was a serious standard. Like so there was like himself and Mark. Um, and I remember Luke wasn't able to be on the bench for the Sligo game, so I was on the bench for them and getting a full week's training and doing the small city games and and the, and then the full matches and everything was class. And trained away, came towards the break. Um, it was meant to start the 19th season, got injured then, missed the first four or five matches, then got back in. Remember, we, we beat Longford and Finn Park, it was my first game in ages. We beat them, beat them 4 0. Um, and then played the rest of the 19th season. We got to, got to a Shield semi final up in Dundalk. I think we played Waterford, we got beat an extra time. Uh, played all the reserve matches, also senior league. And then Tommy came in and approached me then. 
um in Jan- December, January time. But I suppose because I was on a pro contract, when I when I my clearance to come through to the North was late coming through. So yeah. I remember that they, they, they played Derek, you played Glen Horn in an Irish Cup game. And I had played also senior league maybe a week before it or something around Christmas time. So okay. when you're on a pro when you're on a pro contract, you have to wait thirty days for your clearance to come through from the last yeah. time you played. So I might have played, say, like the second or third week in December. So I wasn't able to be in the squad for that game. And I thought maybe the week after I'd be able to be in the squad yeah. during that week. And they were playing lock all. Um and wasn't able to be in the squad, so I was kind of annoyed at that. Like, and the there the keeper at the time, he, he he had a good game, but in particular it was one each. And I remember he pulled the worldy off with like a yeah. minute to go. So, my who who was the keeper of, at that time? Al Alan Buchanan, he was called. Okay, um, yeah. Might might not know him, but he, yeah, he had a no, worldy. Yeah. He, he, he had a worldy there in the last minute, so. Was my hopes of going in and starting straight away? I had to wait three or four weeks before I got my first game. Good like, your time, yeah. Yeah, um, but there's a keeper coach there, Tony Blake. Yeah, you probably know Tony yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, were, you were chatting to him like he's for any young keeper coming up. Hey, he's he's awesome. So he has like especially oh, yeah, stepping into, stepping into a senior setup for the first time. Like he was well, obviously a train with them, but actually playing like just wee things he would say to you in the warm up and stuff, and wee things yeah. he would gauge on. Like he's he's class, so he is. And he's definitely the, one of the reasons that I ended up getting player of the year last year because of how good he was with me. Um, so I had to wait probably two or four weeks and got in, got in then and then kept me kept me spot then for the majority of the rest of the season. I know we went we went game about for the five spot games, but um, and then obviously signed for Derby full time. So I was on loan for the first six months, and I still could play nineteens for another year or two. But I just thought at the time it was it was better for me just to go out and get senior football under my senior belt. Senior like, football, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like maybe people mightn't think it's the championship in the north's the highest level, but it's definitely a good breeding ground for young boys coming through, like, because it's it's a it's a tough league. Like you're you're getting battered with corners, like and some of the teams we played that year, you know, we we played Newry in the last game. Um, and I think there might have been two or three thousand at the game, like they won the league that day. And just to play in them kind of them kind of venues and them kind of crowds and stuff. It was great for me personally. Um and even the derbies like we played in boxing thing as Ball the Mallard. Mm-hmm. Um and them games there are class to play in. Yeah. Like and then the first game of the season this year we played Ported Down like and they're still going for the league now at the minute. But they I think they brought down a thousand with them nearly to the to the derby yeah. game as well. So like to play and just even how to deal with crowds and how to deal with all that kind of stuff. That's that that's a priceless so it is like you were really really lucky to get them experiences like what's it like yeah it's really really important and i think um really valuable like you know i played a little bit myself in the 19s league and i i obviously didn't go and play um senior football but you know that difference between 19s and senior senior football like men's football you know um there's a big gap there and i think exposing yourself as early as you can to that is you know, going to be the best for your development, like, and there's going to be great opportunities. Um, so that, that you know, it's it's great. Like, why don't I know? Again, we're just um unconscious of time here, Patty. Uh, we'll do some quick fire questions, very generic, to finish this up. No um, because I think you know you might you've dropped a few names there. You've you you're kind of holding back. I feel like you know um. So let's see if we can dig a little bit deeper and find out something. So why don't we go with um best player you've played with? Um best player I've played with. Uh, pro- like at the moment now, probably have to go Connor Bradley. Uh, okay, with yeah. That's decent. Um, yeah, that's another big name there. Uh, yeah, I played at a tournament and over in England with him. Um and even back then, he was he was rapid, so he was he was class. Like he played, in, he played in a wing then. He obviously he's playing right back now, um. But played with him, and was in a couple of training camps with Evan Ferguson as well. He's with Brighton, um. He was he even back then. Like I think he was fourteen or fifteen. He was probably twice the size of everyone. Twice, yeah. twice the what everyone. He was class. Like, um. There's a few other lads there. Like you obviously have the, uh, Liam Delap there and. Trained mm-hmm. with like the likes of Presti and Jason Knight. Um, 
and then the Irish the Irish girls see me Kelly Robinson obviously. Um yeah. but no, I've been lucky enough now to play play what play with a lot of good players, like and especially some of the some of the lads I've played with the seniors, like like you know, not that I played any matches competitive matches for the seniors, like but you had Mark you had Mark Coyley's captain Shelburne now. You That's had right, yeah, good well, player. Well, well Seymour who who's out playing the league below the MLS, like which is an unbelievable yeah. standard. Like like you, there's a lot of good players that came through Fun Park. Um you're just learning off them and taking wee bits and pieces from all of them is just as as brilliant like. Yeah. What about best player you've played against? Um, he probably didn't live up to the heights that he could have. Hey, but uh, played against Karimoko Dembele when I was younger. The way the okay, yeah, yeah. It's a um, over, I think. Yeah, he he was he, he was thirteen back then, but <laughs> we played in that tournament over in Sheffield. We played Celtic, and it was my birthday. I remember, he scored a hat trick against me, but. Rising ballers and like all these Instagram accounts of these videos of Karamoko going about like, and uh, he kind of made me made me look uh maybe look very average now that yeah. and I remember all these videos going about and the comments are coming up goalkeeper shite and all this like and I was like Jeez, hey, hey. um but uh he he was class who he was back then um I'm trying to think now playing against um remember Karamoko he was a he was on radio so he was um. Played against Joe Hodge as well. He played for Man City. Yeah. Um. He's 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 very good. So he is. He was he was class back then. Yeah. Um. But probably gonna have to go with Dembele. I still remember that one. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a sore topic now. So it is. So. Yeah. Um, he was he 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 was class. So he was back then. Uh, I suppose maybe just things didn't work out for him a Celtic or whatever. Yeah. But, um. He was unreal back then. So he was. Yeah, I think he's having quite a good season at the minute, though. So hopefully for yeah. him, that sort of he can kick on. We'll just finish on this one, um, because I always wonder. Obviously, uh, what about because we we can't play with goalkeepers? Who's the best goalkeeper you've trained with? Right. Uh, I don't wanna, don't wanna, don't wanna offend or annoy anyone here. Um, probably gonna name, probably gonna end up naming a few. Um, let me see. At Harp, say you had Mark and Gal, and well, in fairness, though, see Luke McNicholas and Trenton, hey, yeah, he very was, good. He was classy, like he was so tidy, like his drills and everything. He was, he was top class. So he was like, like you could definitely see why he went on to play at the level that he's playing yeah. at, like. Um, I was lucky enough to train with Ed McGinty as well from Sligo, and okay, he's, yeah, very good he's keeper. So. He's, he's, he's class too, so he is. And Jared Doherty was there at Harps for a while as well. Um, and he was even I think he was, might have been thirty nine or forty at the time. Yeah. Like, but he was he was he was very good in training. Too, so I was. Um, but trying to think now with the Irish stuff. Um. Like big Dan Rose at the time as well. Like he used to have this. It was like a he played um he played futsal and he used to have this like big spread where he would come out and he was about six foot four. He'd yeah, have this big, big spread. He'd make, he'd make himself as big as he could. And I remember in training sometimes thinking, geez, he's 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 top class the way he was like. And when he signed for Sharka, like he kind of wasn't surprised because he was that good. Um, but definitely like from seeing Luke McNicholas on a Kind of on a on a daily basis, nearly like he was, he was brilliant. So he was, he was, he was, he was class. Like, yeah, not very good. Listen, Paddy, I'm just we'll leave it there. I think that's two two good videos, two good recordings. Um, I'm stuff. sure, I'm sure we could talk from uh now till uh tomorrow. But uh, thanks, thanks very much for coming on. Um, hopefully listeners will enjoy that episode and really, really appreciate it. No, oh, geez, no problem. Hey, just great to great, great to be on. Thanks for asking me on now. So, All right. um, thanks very much. Eh? Good man. No, no problem. All right, Paddy, have a good evening. Good day. All right, bye. Good man, Sean. Cheers. Eh? Thank you. Bye. bye.